Hello, my name is Jan Langhammer and I'm working as Senior Acquisition Geophysicist in TGS. I'm going to give the talk about the triple source simultaneous shooting, a future for higher density seismic. This presentation takes you through a discussion of reconfiguring marine seismic sources to obtain better crossline sampling in between the streamers in 3D exploration. In addition, I will also give an overview of a field test performed in 2014 of reconfiguring the available gun arrays on board a 3D streamer vessel from dual source to triple source and operate them in simultaneous and sequential mode. But before I start my presentation, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues Pete Benyon, Adriana Thames and Sayun Liu for great contribution to this work. So the outline of the talk, first I will give an introdu introduction about the dual source and triple source, then the acquisition parameters and source details from the test. Thereafter, describe a bit about the test sequences performed, data examples and results, and then the conclusion. The standard in marine 3D seismic exploration is to use a dual source setup and fire them off in sequential mode, what we call flip-flop mode. Simultaneous firing of the sources has been introduced in various streamer and ocean bottom applications, mainly for increase of efficiency and sampling. With exploration in more challenging areas and that the hydrocarbons are harder to find these days, there is a need for better sampling, especially in the crossline direction. So instead of using streamers with more sensors for wave field reconstruction to improve sampling between the streamers, why can't we look into more the source side and split up the available source arrays into a triple source configuration? This will in inherently reduce the crossline bin size. This concept was tested out in the 1980s but without a commercial success. However, in 2016 we have low noise streamers, longer streamers, dynamic range of sensors is, is significantly increased, we have continuous recording and deblending of techniques available in processing to separate data records. In seismic exploration, there has always been a trade off between efficiency, which means size of streamer spread at one hand, and the requirement for dense enough sampling at the other hand. So, at different streamer spacing, if we have two sources, we will have a crossland bin size given by the blue curve, and if we have a three source configuration, we will have a bin size given by the orange curve. And if you have even five sources, then crossland bin size will be even smaller and reduced, given by the gray curve. So better spatial sampling, meaning smaller bin size, will give better focusing and imaging of complex structures, both shallow and deeper in the sediments. So what we would like to do is to split the standard available six subarrays into three sources by configuring each source by the use of two arrays. As can be seen here, compared to a standard dual source setup, this will give us more subsurface sampling lines for the same number of streamers. It has to be noted that this is measured data and extra lines are not added by any wave field reconstruction or interpolation. So we will have a lot better sampling. The main aim of this field test was to explore how easy it was uh, to reconfigure the available six subarrays on board a 3D vessel into three sources using two subarrays per source. What data quality can we obtain by such change in source configuration and volume? How to operationally manage this in practice? And finally, can we use triple source configuration in standard 3D acquisition in both sequential flip-flop flap mode, as we say, and in simultaneous mode? So here we have the acquisition parameters. It was 12 streamers and uh, with a length of uh, six uh, kilometers. Uh, bin size uh, also uh, is worth to notice for 6.25 point uh, 25 uh, meter. The source step seven meter, record length 8.2 seconds and fold was uh, 80. It was also a slanted streamer, but that is not of importance in this, uh, in this context. So, when we are doing the so-called dual source simultaneous mode, we have the same streamer setup. We didn't do anything on the source side either, except for that we fired off the two sources at 12 and a half meters uh, shot point interval. That is uh, significantly less than the, the base case. And we have also used the ditter of plus minus 300 milliseconds. The 300 millisecond is for to make some randomization when we are firing off the sources in this mode in order to have a possibility to deblend the data. So for the triple source sequential, we also had a shot point interval of 12 and a half meter, but then we will have 37.5 meter of subsurface shot point sampling. Uh, this will give us a bin size that is smaller than the base case. It is 6.25 times 16.66 meter 
But um, also here, note that the fold is the same as for the base case because we are shooting it off in sequential mode. In um, the triple source simultaneous, we uh, are then back to the ditter interval of plus minus 300 milliseconds. And the bin size is of course the same as the, for the previous, where we have three sources. But here note that the foal is significantly increased. We have a foal of 240 when firing off this in simultaneous mode. The standard setup had a 3480 cubic in source. And when splitting into three sources, we were left with two times 2495 cubic inch and one 1970 cubic inch source in the middle. Given a limited time of 24 hours for the testing, we did not have time for any mechanical engineering, but having different source volumes turned out to be a test in itself. The signatures on spectra plotted in the same window shows in blue the 3480 cubic inch and in red the 2495 and 1970 cubic inch sources. The differences are mostly on the strength of the primary peaks, but nevertheless, the parameters of the two smaller sources appear to be quite good, especially when it comes to the primary to bubble ratio, as can be seen in this table. We also checked the directionality of the sources and they appear to be quite similar. And for a narrow azimuth survey like this, it is of minor importance. As said, we had 24 hours to perform this test, including the reconfiguration and shooting, so only one same line per test were acquired. Two of the test sequences were approximately in the same positions, but with some differences, of course. Sequence 069 is the standard dual source sequence, which serves as the benchmark. We don't have a full 3D coverage volume, uh, since we only have a few sequences. So uh, the analysis of the data from the different salons were performed on 2D stack level. So to repeat, sequence 069 is the benchmark of dual source, sequence 109 is the dual source in simultaneous mode, sequence 111 is the triple source in sequential mode, and sequence 112 is the triple source in simultaneous mode. When firing off the sources almost at the same time, at 12.5 meter, we then of course obtain a higher fold. Uh, in the processing of the data, the deep blending technique used was the enhanced adaptive subtraction method referred to as EAS, and this method is covered by a couple of SEG and EAG talks given in 2014 and 2015. So, when firing off the three sources sequentially, or what we may call flip-flop-flap, will have an appearance like this. So, the sources, they are fired at uh, different times, for instance, five to six, uh, six seconds, and we can split the records into individual records when knowing the exact firing time of the shot points, which can be found on the SEGD headers. So no de-blending is needed when data is acquired in sequential firing mode. In simultaneous firing of the three sources, they are separated in time within a ditter interval of plus minus 300 milliseconds. This interval can of course be changed after what will be required. And um, then we will see the appearance like this. So here we have overlapping shot records, which will require a de-blending method before further processing. Moving to some data examples. Here we have a record from the standard dual source sequence 069, which is the benchmark. The arrows mark the direct arrival and the seafloor reflection at the specific channels for some shots, given here by the blue arrows. The next example record from sequence 112 shows the case where we have triple source in simultaneous mode. And here we have quite a difference. The arrows mark the direct arrival and the seafloor reflection at these specific channels for some shots. And note that there will be three direct arrivals and three seafloor reflections coming in within a short time interval. This is a data example uh, from sequence 109, dual source in simultaneous mode, when data are sorted into common offset domain, which means same channel for several shots. So here we are showing sources one and uh, source two, and we clearly see that there are events from source two in source one panel that will appear randomly, and the same happens when we look at source two data in source two time, that source one comes in randomly, which can be treated as noise. 
So let's have a look at the same gather in the common offset domain, where source 2 comes in with re random events and then we do the deblending. Here we remove the randomly distributed source 2 data from source 1 common offset domain. This is performed on all common offset data and timing of the event has to be switched between source 1 and source 2 time in the iterative noise removing process. And the difference between the input data without any deblending and the deblending version using the enhanced adaptive subtraction method. We observe that the removed events are the source events that can be treated as noise in source 1 time common offset gather and there is no uh, primaries leaking through in this gather. Let's have a look at the benchmark sequence 069, the dual source, NMO corrected CDP, common debt point gather panels. They look pretty clean and good and of course we observe a lot of multiples in these gathers. Then we compare the previous with NMO corrected CDP gathers from sequence 109 dual source in simultaneous mode. When not deblended, we observe that there are a lot of source 2 noise in source 1 gather panels and source 1 noise in source 2 panels. However, after deblending, it looks a lot better when it comes to noise in the data. The source 2 random events are removed from source 1 data gathers and source 1 random events are removed from source 2 data gathers. And the difference between the input row and the deblended gathers from sequence 109. Only noise events are removed and no primary events of significance are observed, which is good. Again, back to sequence um, of uh, 069 dual source, which is the benchmark, and uh, now preparing to compare with triple source CDP gathers. That's why we have three panels now. And here we have the equivalent triple source simultaneous data CDP gathers from sequence 112. Also here we note that the noise in the data panels from the other sources events. Events from source 2 and 3 are observed as noise in source 1 gathers events. And source 1 and 3 are seen as noise in source 2 gathers. And finally source 1 and 2 events appear as noise in source 3 gathers. In order to sum up what we have seen so far in the gathers, uh, the aliasing in the CDP domain is reduced when firing the sources more often, and the multiples appear more continuous due to reduced trace spacing in the CDP domain. The deblending has taken care of the random events that can be treated as noise. Moving on to the stacks and comparing the dual source sequential with dual source simultaneous firing, because of higher fold and that the deblending itself is a noise reduction process, we see that the signal to noise ratio is higher on stack section from simultaneous acquired data, here shown to the right. The triple source, when fired in sequential mode, should be of the same quality and signal to noise ratio should be approximately the same, since shot point interval is equal for the subsurface sampling lines. This is observed when scaling for differences in source strength. However, since we only have one sail line, we can only do a 2D comparison, and it has to be noted that the main uplift for doing the triple source configuration will be in better cross-line sampling, which will be in 3D. And the last stack example, here we have the sections comparing stacks from dual source sequential with triple source simultaneous firing. After deblending of the triple source data, we obtain a better signal to noise ratio given mostly by the higher fold in addition to the inherent noise reduction factor in the deblending process. So, in conclusion, we can say that there has been a successful reconfiguration and operation of a triple source setup in both sequential and simultaneous source firing mode. Higher fold, less aliasing and improved cross-line sampling of a triple source in simultaneous mode versus standard dual source uh, given the same streamer spacing. The blending method performs very good on data when using two and three sources in simultaneous mode. Triple source in both sequential and simultaneous mode is an option when higher sampling is required. Why stop at three sources? We could do with more. So with this, I conclude my talk and thank you very much for your attention and for listening to this e-lecture.